Hello and welcome to the Temple of Tomes with your host, Indie Comics Jones. Today is July 28th, 2021, and this is episode 376. Today we're looking at Symbiote Spider-Man Crossroads is the name of this particular arc. This is a Marvel number one. There's no legacy number on here, so... I don't know if Symbiote Spider-Man is a brand new s series or not, but maybe it is. Uh, this comes in at a whopping $4.99, and on the cover here you can see we've got Sp Spider-Man, or the Symbiote Spider-Man, Black Cat, and also the Hulk. And then we have this tree with hands coming out. Now, I'm not sure what that was all about. We didn't really see it in this first issue. Uh, there might be something leading into it at the beginning of the second issue, though, so we'll, we'll um, keep on that. I just want to say that this is a recommend for now. I didn't think it was incredibly great, but it was, was fun. And uh, we'll get into some of the artwork on here. This cover is done by Greg Land. Uh, he's kind of got a reputation for uh, doing a lot of light boxing maybe tracing, things like that, using the images from other sources. And I think he does that in here as well. And we'll talk about that later. But uh, let's take a look to see who worked on this. The writer is Peter David. The penciler was Greg Land. The inker was Jay Lyston. The colorist was Frank D'Amato. VC... Joe Sabino was the letterer, and the cover artist was Greg Land and Frank De Darmato, Darmarta. And uh, we get this little quick blurb here, Spider-Man created by Stanley and Steve Ditko. And let's talk about this real quick. After the Secret Wars, Peter Parker returned to New York City with a brand new costume he thought had been created by alien technology. It could respond to his every thought shapeshift to mimic his civilian clothing and even generate a seemingly endless supply of his unique web fluid. Now, in his sleek all-black suit, Peter Parker works to balance his personal life and superheroics as he swings through the city as the amazing Spider-Man. Though, unbeknownst to Peter, his alien costume may be more than meets the eye. Well, we don't really see it so much in this issue, so maybe that's something that is planned for the future. Right off the bat, we get a commercial for Dark Hawk, number one, Kyle Higgins. Who is this who is the new Dark Hawk? Witness the rebirth of Marvel's newest hero coming in August 2021. So we open up at a bar in New York. We have Moondark, and he is approached by... Uh, we don't know who it is at first, but it is revealed later. It is actually Carnilla the Norn Queen. So... We'll see that later. Then we switch to uh, New York as well. This is J. Jonah Jameson wearing a mustache that's been out of style since the Third Reich. So I'm not sure why they put it in there. But it is written into the script by Peter David. And it's supposed to be a light, I think, kind of funny thing. Funny gag. Um, yeah, it's all right. I didn't think it was that great. Now here's uh, one of the weird things that Greg Land does. Like I said, he does seem to... Uh, trace or use other sources so for the presidential vehicle he's using like a 1970s limousine and they're currently using like escalade suvs for the uh, limousines now so this is like such an out-of-date photo you know I, i'm not sure why they're using something so old it looks like a lincoln or something like that so we have uh, J. Jonah Jameson almost about to meet the president, only Spider-Man intercedes, squirting the president's hand and uh, stringing him up, basically. J. Jonah Jameson is, of course, livid at this, and uh, Spider-Man jumps on down to explain. 
that uh, it's not really the president, it's the chameleon. And he had a poison ring. He was going to take you out, Mr. Jameson. And uh, so there's a little cat and mouse going between Spider-Man and the chameleon. But then Spider-Man points out that someone's got their laser sight on you. So uh, you better comply and tell us where the real president is. Obviously, he's been held for ransom since the chameleon had taken his place. So that is solved. They move on. They uh, talk about the photos that Peter Parker took and sold to Mr. Jameson. Now, here's another one. Look how big Jonah's head is compared to Peter's. It's like, it's really out of scope here. Um, all right. You know, I'm being picky, maybe. I don't know. But there's other little things in here. Um, overall, the, the art in this is very polished. It looks very good. Um, so, but you've got something that looks like that looks like a drawn face and then that looks not like a drawn face so um, that looks like it's almost a photo image drawn over so we do get a little bit of this going on back and forth there's Peter I wasn't even sure that was Peter at first but that's him images tend to change quite a bit in here facial expressions so Peter realizes black cats waiting for him, and Black Cat is his girlfriend in this. Her name's Felicia something, and I cannot remember what her last name is. So she tips him that there's supposed to be a robbery at the museum, and Spider-Man says, well, how do we know this isn't a trap? And she says, it probably is. So there's a Viking exhibit going on at the museum. Moondark is there. He kind of hypnotizes the guard and tells him to go play in the street. And so off he goes, wee, and Moondark's about to break open this case to steal the Norn Power Stone, but Spider-Man intercedes, or at least he thinks it's Spider-Man. He attacks it with one of his power rays. Being a very powerful magi magician, he blows it up, but it's not Spider-Man. It turns out to be a dummy that Spider-Man had put up there, so he knocks him down. He squirts the guy right in the face to block his vision, and Moondark starts shooting just randomly, trying to hit him. He tells him he can't. Now, this is one of the other things that kind of bothered me a little bit. This, this webbing looks fine there, but here it looks like it's just like they didn't fill it in correctly. So I, I don't know if it's a color's fault or whatever. There seems to be no texture for it. It just seems like it's a blank page. And you see that in a couple spots here. It was a little bit annoying to look at. Here it is again. Like we just didn't get any ink on there. It doesn't look like it's um, some kind of opaque fluid. It just looks like it's nothing. Like it's no color there at all. So you know, maybe that was the intent, but it just looks really weird. Okay, let's move on. It is a fun book. It is, you know, I think uh, if you like Spider-Man, you'll probably enjoy this a lot. He tears it off. Um, he's able to, before he tears it off his face, though, he is able to use his mind powers to get the police to chase Spider-Man. But then the Black Cat steps in and trips him up. Um... And Moon, Moon Dark sends an image of a tiger out to attack Black Cat. So she runs off out of the room. He goes after the, the, the Power Stone. There is some kind of uh, protection around it, but he's able to get past that. Meanwhile, Spider-Man, being chased by the police, has to dump a whole skeleton onto them just to kind of knock them out. Moon Dark is going for the stone again. This time he gets it. And just as this, this cat is about to uh, get Black Cat, the tiger get Black Cat, she tells him to scat and it disappears. So we're not sure if it really did disappear on her own, on the cat's own, or if she had something to do. They kind of theorize that something happened and... Moondark is using his power in a different direction. So they go running after him. 
they find it um, and they just they're distracting him they're doing all kinds of things it's kind of funny to distract moon dark and then he is zapped by a taser by the police officer he told to go play in the street who got hit by a car and that snapped him out of it he kind of got grazed by a car as he said and this is where we have Carnilla, the Norn Queen, showing up. She's the one that hired Moondark to steal the stone in the first place. And she opens a portal behind him and takes the stone. And here he's got the portal behind him. And just as he's getting pulled and sucked through it, Spider-Man shoots and gets the stone to take with him. And he ends up in this other kind of alternate um, universe I guess with the Hulk and this is where we end so kind of bizarre ending but uh, Peter David does write for the Hulk too I believe and uh, writes well so um, yeah it is a recommend it's a little wacky but uh, it was entertaining and I'll give it that the art in here like I said there's some things that kind of stuck out to me when I was looking at it like the the white out on the on the moon dark's face it just it just looks weird i don't know like they forgot to put more effort into it um and, and a few other things just some of the modeling that went on with some of the objects she used but i am going to go ahead and give it the right here the indie comics jones good excavating seal of approval given out only by indie comics jones on this particular channel except no substitutes Thank you for stopping by and watching this review. As always, please like, please subscribe if you haven't, please leave comments if you wish, and we'll see you next time at the Temple of Tomes. I got a ton of comics this time, so I'm going to have to double up on some of these days. I hope to do one a day, but I got way too many this week, um, and plus I've got the catalog, so I'll have to do a show on each one of those. But uh, we'll see you next time at the Temple of Tomes. Thanks for stopping by. As always, this is Indie Comics Jones bidding you adieu.